Hi and welcome back to the channel. And on this episode today, we're going to be working on a Citroen dispatch van. This vehicle's covered 126,000 miles, and it would look to have been owned by somebody who is possibly doing some mechanical engineering, because the inside's quite greasy. And also, they've been smoking quite heavily, so there's a lot of sort of fag ash inside, and lots of nicotine on the roof uh, lining, which we'll see a little bit later on. So the bodywork on this vehicle isn't in actually bad order, but it's things like the door shuts here, which are full of sort of moss, dust, dirt, and lichen. As we can see, it just looks a bit tired on the outside because the paint works flat, but we can buff that up and restore that. And things like the engine bay just haven't been cleaned probably in the entire lifetime of the vehicle. There's so much dust and debris in here, I think you could probably grow cabbages in it. One thing I did notice inside the engine bay was there's quite a few electronic components that we're going to have to bag up. So it's got a fuse board on the left hand side, so we're going to cover that with a plastic seat cover and then microfiber just to weigh it down. And on the right hand side it's got uh, its main ECU and an ABS module as well. So we just want to be a bit mindful we don't get these areas too wet. And once that's done, I'm going to be applying some all-purpose cleaner over the engine bay and the underneath of the bonnet. So we're going to be using Kosh Chemi Green Star here, a dilution ratio of about 1 to 10. And then we're just going to agitate it with a number of different little brushes of various sizes to get into the little nooks and crannies before pressure washing it off. You'll notice on camera as well, there's these two little rubber sort of pipe sticking out from underneath the bonnet and they're drain holes and I'll just open there as we can see and stick the finger in there to make sure they're not clogged or blocked up because that's an important thing that they need to operate. Also likewise when I've washed the actual engine bay um, this giant open expanse in the middle is like an air intake for the um, blower motor inside the dashboard which does the fan. So it has a couple of drain plugs as well so it's not a problem if you get a little bit of water in there but you want to make sure that there's one at the front, one at the back, and they're draining properly so that doesn't sort of fill with water. And once we've finished washing off all the years worth of goop and grime and filth off that engine bay, we can look to give it some dressing. So as per usual in the last few videos, I'm using Kosh Chemi Motor Plus and we can stick this on wet or dry. I've opted for wet hair, it's just easier. And I'll also be using this product also on the uh, plastic wheel arch liners later on in the video. Next step is to look at things like the rubber window seals and these plastic moldings on the outside. And uh, again, apply the all-purpose cleaner, and then I've got a small uh, work brush that's going around there and making sure all those areas are scrubbed really well. And also the lower of the sill was quite muddy, so I've got a bigger Vicam brush and given that a good old agitation before jet washing it off. Now this is a perfect example of an area that's always overlooked on vans and it's the sliding door runner area. 
these really pack a lot of filth in behind them over the years. And as we're about to see, I'll give you a point of view as I use a jet wash. The amount of junk that's gonna fly out from the back of here, as we can see on camera now, is phenomenal. It's an area that really does trap a lot of dirt. So when you're washing a van, it's a good place to really flush out behind of it. Once that's done, we can move on to things like the door shuts. Again, I've just sprayed all purpose cleaner, agitated it with a little brush. And it's just a case of flushing them out. Now, a lot of these runners and door catches have quite a lot of grease over them. So when you wash them off, you're gonna get 90% of the junk off them. Unless you wanna start getting involved with tar and glue remover and removing all the grease and then re-greasing things to get them to look perfectly clean. Um, there's always gonna be sort of like a little slight gray patch around those areas. My customers aren't worried or are going to pay me the extra money should I spend hours of you know, cleaning a little bit of grease off and reapplying it. It's just not worth it. They're more interested in, for example, me machine polishing scratches and marks out of the paintwork. Now you're about to see a process called iron fallout remover. And this is not something you see every day on detailing channels because most people don't usually bother with this step. Um, commercials are gonna suffer a little bit more for this because they're, they're larger, flatter panels. And basically what this is, it's sort of industrial fallout that's come out of the atmosphere or sometimes if a commercial vehicle's been parked near a building site, you're gonna go, you know, or a train station, you're gonna get a lot of iron filings and junk coming off from the trains as they pull into the train station that you can eat into the paintwork. So what this product does is it attacks those little iron filings sitting on the paintwork or in it. And it's really good because it changes color as it does it. So as I accelerate the footage on the camera here, we're gonna see it's gonna turn bright red and start streaking down the bodywork. The only one big drawback with these products is they absolutely stink. Now, luckily this is a product by CarPro and it's Actually, you can buy an ordinary version of it, or you can buy the LS version, which is lemon scented. I always opt for that one. It just makes it more tolerable to use it. Kind of smells like rotten eggs otherwise. It reeks. But as we wash it off, there's no denying this product's absolutely fantastic. And it's gonna help us later on when we're machine polishing it because all that stuff and junk isn't sitting on top of the paintwork as we're trying to grind back the worn out paintwork and restore a nice gloss finish. So once we've tackled the door shuts, the wheel arches, the engine bay and the iron fallout remover, it's a case of just giving the vehicle a good soak down with some shampoo, drying it off and then we can start on the inside of the vehicle. So the outside all thoroughly washed, we can look to the mobile ashtray interior and try and get rid of this empire of filth or door card. So to start with, what I've done here is just spray a coat of all purpose cleaner over the door card, use a damp microfiber cloth and just see how much we can remove off in an initial wipe. Once that's been done, I'll get a little brush in there and start agitating things around the door locks, all the plastic grooves, speaker cover and also the, the cup holders at the bottom of the door card. Then I'll introduce an airline and that's going to help dry the plastic to make sure we've got all the rubbish off and also blast any of the really congealed sort of coffee etc in the door pocket that you just can't sometimes get with a brush and go blast that straight out for us.
So a really important area we've got to clean here is the roof lining, uh, things like the sun visors, etc. Because it's been smoked in so heavily, these are going to be covered in smoke, tar, and mainly nicotine. And as you'll see on camera as I've started to scrub this uh, seat belt adjustment area, it just turns liquid orange. So you're going to have to wring out your microfibers pretty, you know, on a regular basis because it's just going to clog them up very quickly with this goop. And as you're wringing it out in the bucket, you can quite literally see the water start turning orange. If you actually look quite closely where my hand is, there's a couple of drips there just hanging onto the roof plastic and you can see how dark that is. That's how fast it turns, completely clear, all-purpose cleaner, black and orange from the roof lining. And as we turn onto the seats, the driver's one I had to be really careful with because obviously the base has got a, a little tear in it. So I've done that sort of small section by hand and then had to sort of be a little bit careful with the material. That's something that the uh, dealer's going to have to go and get repaired later on. What made the passenger seats quite amusing was you had insult for injury, really it was double bubble with this one. Not only it had the grease, the smoking, but it also had a dog on it at some point as well. So it's, this seat's really seen some action. So hence, as we start to clean the base of it, we see quite a lot of filth coming out of it because it's just, it's had everything on it, unfortunately. And as we're about to see on camera, for an area that's really quite small, the filth is you know, quite immense. So the first bucket's from the passenger side plastics, second bucket's from the driver side plastics, and then of course we've obviously got the disgusting goop we've extracted from the seats. So with that all done, we can start to look to do something with the outside of this van. I'm not going to bore you with hours of machine polishing, I know people can find that tedious. So I've used some Kosh Chemi H9, which is quite a strong cut, with some chemical guy pads. And then finished down with some Rupes Uno Protect, which is a polish and sealant. So one thing that was letting this van down was these horrible steel wheels. So the same as the... Uh, Royal Mail van I did a few weeks ago. I'll put a link up here in the box. I've painted them satin black. I've used the Kosh Chemi Motor Plus we used on the engine bay to dress the plastic wheel arch liners. And I've fitted some nice new wheel trims. So one of the biggest things that fade on these old vans is these plastic trims. So we're going to use a product by Concept Chemicals called Vista and we're just going to rub that into this bumper and as you can see it's highly effective. It's going to darken it right back down. Uh, the only thing you need to bear in mind with this product is two things. One, it needs uh, an amount of time to cure and go off, so um, probably three to four hours. It's very long lasting which is fantastic but you cannot put it outside in the rain until it's fully cured or frost uh, it will affect it and it starts getting sort of blotchy and white so if you're going to use it it's very good but you really need to make sure the vehicle's kept dry for a, at least four or five hours before you put it outside
So these little videos uh, shorter this week than what we usually have, mainly because I don't want to try and stretch something to 30 minutes when I don't really honestly think there's uh, enough material to do it. And secondly, I'm trying to upload every week. So sometimes we might just do a little shorter video, but it's still going to be something a bit different or educational. Good news is I have filmed uh, a couple of other vehicles already. I'm currently editing next week's one and that's a lot more involved. That's going to be similar content to the red uh, combo van I did about three or four weeks ago. That video is, I'm going to imagine, around about 35 minutes, uh, maybe 40. Uh, the bonus to that as well will be looking at some of the products I use, explaining why I use them, a little bit more tutorial as well. So it should be quite exciting and the car is absolutely gross. I mean, it's. I'm not just saying that. I know the combo is really bad. This is on the same sort of league. I think it's been sat can't remember, something around about seven years. It's a very, very long time. But I think the benefit of this video as we start watching the before and afters, just shows, you know, the value of giving a vehicle a really good clean and what you can do and turn it around. This van beforehand did look a bit tired and sort of a bit worse for wear. You know, spend a day and a half on it, scrubbing it with the right materials and a bit of labor. And it's amazing how much you can transform something. And as for the rear of the vehicle, it was just, covered in grease and stuff really. I cleaned the bulkhead off and the inside of the doors, but the ply lining in the back, there's not really much I can do with that. Um, it's one of those things you can get a new ply lining kit off eBay or off the internet relatively cheaply. I think if you were concerned by it, you just bolt a new one in and that would improve the back of the vehicle. And if you want a reason for the subscription, well, I'll give you this here on the screen. It's a little sneaky preview of what we've got coming. So that's just inside the filler cap. This is a Volkswagen Beetle. I think it's a 2003 off the top of my head. And it's actually growing grass in the rear wheel arches. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching the video. And I look forward to seeing you next week when we do the Beetle.